you join us for a brand new season, 2008. The location, Albert Park, Melbourne for round one, the Australian Grand Prix. The five lights are on and there's a big long pause before the five lights go out. And from the front row, Paul Sitasato versus his big championship rival, Mark Redder. The two that battled hard for each other in the championship last season. Heidfelders had a great launch, but he was sort of boxed in. And look at that big bumping at the back. Who on earth lost a front wing? It looked like a Super Aguri. I think the Renault got a little bit airborne as well. We are looking at the Ferrari. Is that Sergio Perez or Timo Glock? I think it's Perez looking at the helmets. And look at that side by side between Sato and Button going into turn three. Weber has taken the lead of the race. And still looking at this Ferrari. He's getting he's get a lot of airtime at the moment, but really the action's at the front because there is the leader, Mark Webber, with an enormous lead. That's 1.7 seconds in one sector. So after losing the championship in Brazil, Webber means business in front of his home crowd. <coughs> As we switch back to fourth place, Nick Heifeld, who had that good start and locking up. That's a Force India having a look at Timo Glock, who's moved up to seventh place with a great start. Where on earth did he start on the grid? Definitely not in the top lots. There's yellow flags out. So who is who is off the circuit somewhere? Robert Kubica out of the race already with a crash, it seems. So where on earth has he gone? Can't see where exactly the yellow flags are. The two force Indians. Oh, look at that! Fernando Alonso has just had his wheel wiped out going into the fast left-right chicane. And I think further back, the other Super Aguri of Felipe Massa, I think he was the one who lost his front wing at the start. So we've got chaos at the start of the 2008, <coughs> excuse me, 2008 season as Mark Webber leads at the end of lap one, having just set a new fastest lap. And the other car involved was the BMW Sauber of Juan Pablo Montoya. So obviously the two had a collision going into the left-right chicane of 11 and 12. Lewis Hamilton into the pits as well, so he's obviously sustained damage from that first lap. So, let's have a look. We've got Daniel Ricciardo, who's up to 12th. That was from 21st on the grid. The Toro Rossos did not qualify at all well. Daniel Ricciardo and Paul De Resta. De Resta making some moves. He's up the inside of the Williams. I wonder which one that was. Let's recap the order so far. Lap 2. It's Mark Webber who leads from Takuma Sato. Jensen Button third, so the two Toyotas in the top three, both having qualified very well, continuing where they left off as much Constructors Champions winners through the chicane. And now we switch to eighth place, Timo Glock defending that position very heavily from one of the Red Bulls, is that it's Sebastian Vettel is defending from. So, let's see, Sergio Perez in 10th position, Matthias Lauder in 11th. And a spin, that's Adrian Sutton in the Force India. So Force Indias, who has shown very, very strongly in pre -se Oh, and he's lost his front wing as well. That was clumsy. No other word for that, clumsy. There goes Matthias Lauda up to 10. <laughs> and Sutton's going to have to pick for a new front wing. So, did he have a collision with another driver? Who knows? And Jensen Button, he's lost third place to Nick Heidfeld. So Nick Heidfeld is up to third in the Williams. Now, Jensen was close to Sato, so where on earth has Button made a mistake somewhere? Let's see. He's still fairly close, so I thought it would be a fairly genuine overtake. Meanwhile, in fifth position, we have got Kimi Raikkonen for the McLaren BMW McLaren Switch Suppliers. And Christian Albers in sixth, and look at that, side by side, Barrichello losing the position to <coughs> Williams. Or is that Jules Bianchi, I think? Gil Bianchi making his debut for the 2008 season. And he's up to 13th at the moment. There's your race leader, Matt Webber. About to enter the fast chicane. Looked a bit wide on the entry there. I think we'll have lost him a little bit of time, but he's still 2.3. <coughs> I have a cough, so you have to bear with me from this one. Uh, 2.3 seconds ahead of Takuma Sato. There he goes. New, new livery for the Honda. Switching from the black earth car to the white earth car. Sergio Perez versus Sebastian Vettel for 8th position, going into turn 13. And to 14, the fast right before breaking. It's always been a very difficult braking zone, that one, into the 15 tight left. One of the slowest corners on the circuit. So, Tiki Masato, 1.2 seconds ahead of Nick Heidfeld, who's closing in on the Japanese driver, the three time champion. Look at that, aggressive defending from Vettel, who has Sergio Perez having a look. 
Both Ferraris in the top nine. Didn't have a very good season at all last time out with Vettel and Trulli at the wheel. Some of that might have been down to the car losing some development in the break of the season. So Kimi Reichman had set the fastest lap that one for that time around. So he's closing in on the top three, top four. <coughs> Mark Webber going through the nine and ten. Now the long sweeping left. The palm trees on the outside and the big lake a little bit further out there. No mistakes this time going into turn 11. And now another short straight before the tricky braking zone of a tricky turn 13 corner. It is as if Mark Webber is starting to stretch out the gap between himself and Tiki Masato. So there is your three time champion we're looking at. The camera pans to the wide shot and you can see both forcing the steering in fact, it's a McLaren and Force India, Kimi Raikkonen and Christian Albers. That Force India, that's made leaps and bounds ever since the last season. They had 10th when they were known as Spiker, beating out the Toro Rosso team. As Mark Webber continues on his merry way, very curious at the camera angle we're looking at there. As he breaks into turn 3, this will be. Now into a left of 4. Now, we've got Nico Hülkenberg looking at Subtle. Nico Hülkenberg having moved teams from Super Gary to BMW Sauber. Montoya and Hülkenberg in theory sounds like quite a good lineup, but BMW Sauber seems to have struggled a little bit in the pre-season testing. <coughs> On Robert Kumasato, you can see, turning right and a little bit left. And accelerating on this decent sized straight, but it's going to lead straight into a very fast again. The best corner in the circuit, I reckon. Watch him flip left here. Stay to the left and then flip to the right. Good little corner, that. <coughs> but it's still Mark Webber who leads the race as he goes through turn 13. Now into turn number 14. As I mentioned, Toyota won the Constructors' Championship last time out. And as a result, the Sunbus had no reason <coughs> no reason to change his driving rate. Honda's lineup has remained the same, Takuma Sato and Matthias Lauda. The Gulf is still appears to be there in qualifying, although it must be said that the top 22 were separated by just six tenths of a second. A very, very close to Matthias Lauda's up in 10th at the moment. There's a shot at Christian, <coughs> Christian Alves, sixth place. Down to turn three. And behind him is Timo Glock, formerly Red Bull, now with Ferrari, and he seems to have settled in rather nicely. And Sebastian Vettel not doing too badly either for the Red Bull. In fact, Glock and Vettel swap places for this season. Let's go through some other driver lineups. We have got McLaren, have got Kimi Reichen remaining with the team, but now they've got different engines, switching from the Mercedes to BMW. And I've also got Camille Kobayashi, who was dropped last time out at Renault midway through the season in favour of Daniel Ricciardo, but he's now found another race drive with the McLaren team. And at the moment it seems that Raikkonen has the measure over the popular Japanese driver. <coughs> Some other lineups. Red Bull have uh, switched drivers completely, switched team bosses actually. Now run by Zoe Mitchell. And they've got Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. Some other lineups. Toro Rosso have got Daniel Ricciardo and Paul De Resta making his debut. Williams switched in the driver lineups as well. They have got Nico Nick, Nick Heidfeld and Virginia. And who else have we got? Ferrari have got Glock and Perez. And some more ones. Renault, they've got still got Robert Kubica. And let's have a quick look at Sergio Perez versus Timo Glock in turn one. Holds into that one as if Perez was going to make the overtake stick, but it's Vettel, sorry, Vettel has made that overtake stick. It's, I've got, made my first mistake already, still think Glock drives for Red Bull. There's Jules Bianchi up in 12th position, not doing too badly actually. He's on the fringes of point. He's, ooh, we overtook Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo has disappeared somewhere in a new fact of that way. He's subtle in the fourth in there. Interesting one. So, somewhere along the line, Bianchi has overtaken Daniel Ricciardo for 11th position. 
Takuma Sato has still got Mick Heidfeld closing in on him. <coughs> Gap is just eight tenths of a second. So we could be seeing a battle of the second soon. Sato definitely slipping back from Mark Webber. The gap between Webber and Sato 3.4 seconds. <coughs> there is Daniel Ricardo and missing the, <coughs> missing the apex a little bit. And as a result, he's got Paul DiResta much closer now. As Mark Webber sets a new fastest lap to win. 26.2. And just behind these two, we've got oh, Christian Alba setting a new fastest lap now. Force India, very quick. They had a lot of budget to spend on some upgrade tokens, and I suspect they're using that to good, good effect, or a sort of throw away a very good position earlier on. Possibly with a collision, possibly with a spin. But anyway, there he is in 15th position. Having overtaken, that is, that is the BMW Sauber of Nico Hulkenberg. <coughs> So Rubens Barrichello has joined Robert Kubica and the Renault team. That was a good segue, I think. And so to 7.6 seconds behind the Brazilian. Formerly of this team, now with the Renault team. And Renault not showing particularly well in qualifying. Qualifying fairly on the order. That's Felipe Massa we are looking at going through the first couple of corners. On the Pirelli tyres and the Super Aguri running Cosworth engines, good to see that name in amongst the in the most roster. Well, it's a bit unknown as to what tyres everyone's using. I do think that BMW Sauber might be running the hard tyres and the McLarens might be running the mediums, but we'll double check that at some point. As Mark Webber pulls out half a second in that final sector, as that is Paul DeRester having just been overtaken by Rubens Barrichello going through a some point during this lap. So Rubens Barrichello either on the move or Paul DeRester might have made a mistake because he's a bit further back to his own teammates than he was before. So rounding turn four goes to Kumasato, still got Heidfeld, who doing a very good job for Williams, having Having done what did what he could with a BMW Sauber that was a bit unreliable and not the quickest car in the world, he did get a second at Monaco. Other than that, not too much for the BMW Sauber team to write home about. So that's going through turns nine and ten, and that is still Takuma Sato. He's still dropping back from race leader Mark Webber, looking for a home run through the fast chicane he goes. Three-time champion, and he did that with a, with a good drive at Brazil, although the McLarens were very, very quick, especially with running hard tyres at Brazil, as to why they got a 1-2 finish. And Mark Webber, on lap two, made a made a mistake at the Lalanja corner, and basically that was his championship win. So we are now looking at two Ferraris with a Red Bull in between, the Red Bull in the meat of a Ferrari sandwich. <coughs> That is Glock, Vettel and Perez. Now we switch over to Lauda. No, it's Sato versus Heifel for second. Sato's made a mistake somewhere because Heifel is now all over the back of the Honda. Now can Heifel in the Williams BMW. So we've got three teams running BMW engines this season. The Works team, the McLaren that we're looking at there, Kimi Raikkonen, and the Williams are running BMW engines. So Kimi Raikkonen in fifth. Just six tenths per second behind Jensen Button, so Reichman not doing too badly, although he did start third, so he's got a couple of positions at this moment. <coughs> and in fact, Jensen will pull out a little bit over Kimi Reichman in the first sector, Mark seconds. There's a look at Mark Webber. 5.2 seconds now ahead of Sato, and that's before we've even reached the second sector point. There's the 5.2, and it's still 5.2, so. Remaining stalemate in that section of the lap, which only really consists of two corners. I mean, there's three pinks, but these cars are going flat out for us, so basically just two corners. Turn six and turn nine. <coughs> Quick look at Nick Heidfeld once again, as he sits in third position. Eight tenths behind Sato, and nine tenths ahead of Button. So, what strategies have everyone running on? They all seem to have done two stops last season at Melbourne. 
we will be seeing the same again, or could somebody try and flee, or could somebody try and just a one-stop strategy? Strategies became more varied as the season went along, there was a mixture of running two and three at... Ooh, the lock-up there for Sergio Perez into the first corner, for the running for the early tyres. As you can see by the red ring around the sidewalls of his tyres. And just behind there is the tyre slab, a really interesting wheel belt in that, in that Honda. The rear wheels seem much wider compared to the fronts. Here's another illustration of that, Takuma Sato, and you can see the second through to sixth all still very close together. So now which one of these five can do a good pit stop strategy to break from another? That'll be interesting to find out because you can see that Sato in the very wide wheel based, well, from rear tyres, the fronts look a bit narrow and you get through this high curve. And I think Kimi Raikkonen was trying to keep his position in check over Christian Alves, 5th and 6th battling each other. And they're about to start their 12th lap. Webber has just done so now and setting a new fastest lap in the process, a 126.1. Sato crossing the line with Heidfeld still close behind, about 6 tenths of a second. And Kimi Raikkonen still chasing Jensen Button and he's still got Christian Alves in close quarters behind him. 7th, 8th and 9th, block, Catholic and Perez. 10th, and rounding out the points, is Matthias Lauber. Will Bianchi in 11th position at the moment. I believe it still, should still be Daniel Ricciardo in 12th, along with Ruben Barrichello 13th, and one of the other top So Paul De Resta in 14th position. And then Nico Hulkenberg, I think he's 16th, with Christian Albers in 5th. Uh, so it's Adrian Sutter, that's the one. In 15th position. So Toyotas have switched tyres, it seems. They've gone for the Pirelli tyres. And people are on their Hondas, who I believe should still be running Michelins. And Sergio Perez once again having a look at team of the, uh, Sebastian Vettel in the Red Bull. Going into turn number 9. I've got Block Fever. Rounding turn 14, we switch to the race lead and Mark Webber sitting up in second for the school Saturday. And very good drive so far from the Australian. And looking to make amends for his championship loss at the final round last time out at Interlagos. Big shift in calendar this season as another new fastest lap for Mark Webber, 126.1. Because quite a lot of circuits make their debut this season, including the yellow. Uh, the Ritter, an old Hockenheim version, which is one of my personal favourite circuits. What else have we got? We have got the Californian Grand Prix towards the back end of the season at Long Beach as part of a double header with Road America. And what else have we got? Well, in fact, next race will be staying in Australia for the Adelaide Street Circuit and the Oceanian Grand Prix because we've already got an Australian Grand Prix. You're watching it right now. We're on board, I think, with Nick Heidfeld, who is still chasing Sato. Starting to pull away from Jensen Button now, who's got two seconds behind Heidfeld. <coughs> Christian Alba's having a look at Kimi Reichman into turn nine, but not making that one work. And it's now seems to spread out a little bit. I wonder if Jensen has made a mistake somewhere, or has to become quite aggressive. There's a look at your three-time champion, Takuma Sato, consecutive three-time champion. He won it in 2005 with Ferrari, I believe. And in 2006 and 7, he was with the Honda teams. The team. He's still with Honda. He's still doing very well. In second position at the moment, he's making race season. And, oh, that's a bit wide. That is an issue for one of the Ferraris, and it is Timo Glock. That is unfortunate. And is he going to petulant it into the wall? Not sort of, but no damage done aside to, aside from the damage mechanically. That was the reason why he pulled off. And it was a gearbox problem or possibly a drive shaft. Somewhere in the transmission anyway. But let's say gearbox. In fact, it could be drive shaft. It seemed to have happened coming out of turn 13. So let's call it a drive shaft problem. So that's moved. Sergio Perez up to 8th, Sebastian Vettel up to 7th, and a bit of a bit of lock up for the new 9th place driver, Matthias Lauer. And Joe Bianchi's in the points on his debut, that's a good one. And new fastest lap for Sutter, and then Hulkenberg setting the new fastest lap as well. Where's that come from? 
did qualify to a K12, but he's going nowhere in this race. So that's a curious one. So it seems as if the BMW's engine seems to be working quite well because we have got Nick Heidfeld running the Williams BMW in third. So we've got Kimi Reichen in the fifth in the McLaren BMW. It wasn't quite reliable last time out on the last season, but the team boss had been making games on the engine power side of things because we did see both BMW Sauber's perform well, qualifying better in the remaining races of 2007, but becoming a bit more unreliable. There's the Honda, and I think it is running Bridgestone tyres. We'll double check that as I look at the roster. Yep, they are running Bridgestone. So Honda switching from Michelin to Japanese rubber. Makes sense as they are a Japanese team. And it doesn't seem to have done them too much harm as Takuma Sato is in second and Matthias Lada in ninth place. But the Michelins do seem to, well in fact it's the Pirellis that seem to be the tyre to go for at the moment. Or maybe the Toyota is the car to go for because Weber is leading with Jensen Button in fourth position. Now starting to catch back up to Nick Heidfeld, it's 1.6 seconds. But he has still got Kimi Reitman just four tenths per second behind. And Christian Alba's doing a splendid job for Force India in 6th position. That was Sebastian Vettel we were looking at, who is now up to 7th position. Got just the one podium in 2007, and that was at the Bahrain Grand Prix. That when Ferrari was fairly competitive. And Sergio Perez in 8th position. He, he sort of got it together as the season went along, 2007. There, was talk, there were talks that it might have been dropped, but um, he managed to ride out the entire season. He got a few points finishes. Got a tenth in Brazil last time out, despite running the more chewy soft tyres. So there's Daniel Ricciardo in 11th place. And the two Australians in the field, and the other one is, of course, the race. But <coughs> rounding the right, Daniel Ricciardo, who replaced Camille Kobayashi midway through 2007, and did very well compared to his teammates. Renault probably wasn't the best car that season, despite the bits of wing at Monaco. But Ricardo got a series of points finishes and some good performances. So he's now driving for Toro Rosso alongside Luca Mopal di Resta. I think he's still in there somewhere. So around the long left, we are on board with Jensen Button. You can tell from the Union Jack on his helmet and the inscription of the letter B. On his right hand side. And it should be a J somewhere as well, because there are his initials. Same as mine, actually. As he rounds turn 13, you can see Sato and Aiko very, very close to one another, and there it is from the outboard shots. Him Sato under pressure from Nick Heifeld going into the final corner. As Heifeld is he close enough to get enough of a slipstream to have a look into the first corner? Sato's weaving a little bit. But here comes Heidfeld, Sato's defending, and who's going to be latest on the brakes? We switch to Jensen Button at just the wrong opportunity, but I think Sato's just about held on to that one. Still showing in second ahead of Nick Heidfeld. So this is a very external shot of Jensen Button we're looking at. Going to turn three, down to turn four. Short skirt before the cut out into turn number five. <coughs> And now Heifeld is the one who is closer to Jensen Button, having attempted an overtake going into turn one. Hasn't quite worked out. And another new fastest lap for Nico Hulkenberg, a 125.8. To be in these Saubers, although they've not, they didn't qualify particularly well, they're showing some good pace in the race, and again, I think that demonstrates that they are running the harder tyres, which don't give you a good grip in qualifying, but are very, very consistent in the race. And that's a shame for Montoya to get involved in the first lap shenanigans. I was one of them with Fernando Alonso actually in the Super Aguri. And look how close Raikkonen was to Jensen Button then going for turn 13. That was really going to have an attempt. You better be careful because Christian Alves is very, very close behind the McLaren. 
as Sata starts another lap. It's 9.4 seconds, the gap between himself and Weber. There is Camille Kobayashi down in 17th position. Way down in 17th position, so it's not been a great debut for the Japanese driver. Well, debut for McLaren. Returning to, returning to action. He's just going through the fast chicane. For 11 and 12. The bottom graphic doesn't seem to be owned, but let's have a look at Sergio Perez having another look at Timo Glock. No, Sebastian Vettel, why? Glock's out of the race. I'm used to seeing Glock in a Red Bull. Slap myself silly trying to get the names right and look at the distance between Heifeld and Jensen Button, so that must have been a heck of a scrap going into the first corner on that lap. And Heifeld once again closing in onto Kumasato. Vettel versus Perez. I got it right this time. And once again, not making the overtake stick. So it does seem to be very difficult to overtake around Albert Park. Again, as was the case last season. And look at this. Heifel versus Sato. Heifel was just having a speculative look. Going into turn 13. Just behind Jensen Button, Kimi Reichen and Christian Albers. And Sergio Perez now going to do another overtake attempt. Weber just set a new fastest lap, and look at that, Jules Bianchi outbreaking Matthias Lauda for ninth position going into turn 13, so Bianchi can make an overtake work around Albert Park. Good effort. It's the gap between Bianchi and Perez. I ask that because... Because Bianchi... Well, there is the visual gap. So the gap between them in terms of time is 4.7 seconds, so keep an eye out on that. See if, <coughs> see if Bianchi can catch up to Sergio Perez. So the gap is now more than 10 seconds between Mark Webber and Takuma Sato. Looking at the... I think the camera seems to be closer to one of the rear wheels. Probably these left rear wheel. That was a fastest lap for Nico Hulkenberg once again. The BMW Sauber does need, do need to find a bit more pace in qualifying it seems. 11.2 seconds between Weber and Sato. Weber's just cruising out of front, cruising away from the Honda driver. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Weber challenged for the championship this season. In fact, Jensen Button could challenge for the championship as well. Both Toyotas were very quick in pre-season testing. There's 13th place Paul De Resta. And another new fastest lap from Mark Webber, 25.9. 25.8 that time. <coughs> So it's Rubens Barrichello in the 12th position at the moment, and the rest at 13th. Now then, where has Christian Albers gone? He's in the pits, that's why. So Christian Albers, the first one to make a pit stop, as is Jules Bianchi. So that explains their rather nippy pace at the beginning of the race. They have a nice few. <coughs> so that will move Sebastian Vettel up to 6th place, so the Perez up to 7th. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if Perez was going a little bit lighter as to why he was challenging Sebastian Vettel very vigorously and Matthias Lauda in 8th place. Yeah, and that's, that's a decent effort from himself. I don't think he qualified particularly well. And look at this kerfuffle. That's Albus having rejoined from his pit stop. And round the outside goes Rubens Barrichello on Daniel Ricciardo. Taking advantage of that. In fact, now, nah, uh, nah, hang on a second. <coughs> was that Adrian Sutter amongst the action? Yeah, I think it was. Wondered why, what Albers had suddenly done and dropped back. But no, it was in fact Adrian Sutter. So, let's have a look. That's Matthias Lauder we're looking at. And he's got 6.1 seconds between himself and Sergio Perez in front of him. Albers rejoined in ninth place. And he needed to as well because Rubens Barrichello is looking very, very aggressive. So that's the two Toro Rossos we're looking at as a new fastest match between Reichman in fifth position. So he's got some pace in the McLaren. And I think they are running mediums. It's either McLaren on mediums, BMW Sauber on hards, or the other way around. I'm pretty sure it's McLaren on mediums. Gilles Bianchi in 15th. He's got Kobayashi right behind him. Bianchi having just made his pit stop, so he took a bit of time. You can see the brake discs going on that Williams. 
going through turn 13, so using his brakes quite hard. And Heidfeld versus Sato once again into turn 9, not making that one stick. And that's Jensen Button versus Kimi Raikkonen as well. Now, will new tyres on the low fuel be the uh, more advantageous factor? We're having a look at Adrian Sutter through the concrete, we can see the brake discs flowing into turn 3. Discs, we learn how to say that word properly. So it is just behind Paul the Resto at the moment in 12. The Resto in 12. There you can see the brake discs flowing again. The gap's actually half a second. Weber sets to 25.6, going into turn one, and Heifeld in the pits. So his lower fuel explains why he's all over the back of Takuma Sato. That's Leap on that side, and Will Bianchi we're looking at. Now, Bianchi has dropped behind Kobayashi and Felipe Massa, so I suspect that Kobayashi's had a go at Bianchi, and Bianchi's succumbed to that pressure, and has lost two places as a result. Sergio Perez is in the pits as well, as I thought he would be, before Vettel. And Nico Hulkenberg in 18th place now. I think he's made a pit stop as well. Because he, he was behind Adrian Suttle for quite a bit, and now he's even further back. So I think Hulkenberg has made a trip through the pits. And at the moment now he's going through turn 11 and 12. Heifel still making his pit stop. Sergio Perez making his pit stop as well. So Kimi Raikkonen's now moved up to third place ahead of Jensen Button. That's an overtake that we haven't seen. Jensen Button's lost the place to Kimi Raikkonen on track somewhere. So that's a that's a crucial one for the McLaren. Now can he catch up to Takuma Sato, who sits in second place still, 13.2 seconds behind Mark Webber, who's still going on his very, very merry way at the front. Two Toro Rossos, 10th and 11th now, but pit stops are underway. That's another new fastest lap for Mark Webber, 25.5 that time around. There's no need to pit at the moment, but his fuel must surely be getting quite low. Now, any of the other second, third, and fourth can make a pit stop? I don't think so. I think they've all continued for another lap as Christian Alves has a look at Nick Heidfeld for. 7th place, both have made pit stops, and Heifeld just remaining ahead of Christian Albers at the moment. So it was important for Albers to stay ahead of that big queue of cars con consisting of Barrichello and the two Toro Rossos and Adrian Suttil. And it's not quite enough to get ahead of Heifeld now, but, but Albers is still on the move to turn 1, and that side by side through there, Heifeld wasn't really defending that from the two hard. But now Christian Albers has got Rubens Barrichello right behind him and looking to make a move. Keep an eye out on the timing graphic at the bottom and Barrichello having a look. We've got Adrian Sutil having a look at the Toro Rosso as well. That's past Paul Resto, so Sutil moving up the position. And Sutil having made that unscheduled pit stop earlier on, might not have to have converted into a three stop strategy. But it looks as if points are still possible for the German depending on what the other drivers do. Once again, another new fastest lap for Mark Webber, 25.4 that time around. Raikkonen in the pits. Kimi Raikkonen making a pit stop from third. Now his targets to a trend out ahead of Nick Heidfeld and Christian Albers. Keep an eye out on the <coughs> timing graphic at the bottom and see if Raikkonen can jump the Williams of Heidfeld. But it's looking a bit better for Jensen Button now because He's not had to pit before King Raikkonen, and he can use his low fuel to get the jump on the McLaren. Keeping out of the timing graphic, Raikkonen versus Heidfeld. And Takuma Sato has got 2.1 seconds over Jensen Button. Albers versus Heidfeld. I think Raikkonen's long gone, and Heidfeld has made the move on Heidfeld. Christian Albers gaining a position on the Williams driver. Now I do wonder if Nick Heidfeld has taken a lot of fuel for this middle stint and Albers not so much because Albers looking very, very quick at this stage. The Force India in general has just been quick. So now we need to turn four. That is a Red Bull we are looking at. And it is the Red Bull of Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis Hamilton was one driver caught up in the early lap shenanigans. 
So that explains why he's so far down the order. Rubens Barrichello challenging Heidfeld and Adrian Sutter doing something similar to Daniel Ricciardo for 10th position. And with the other leaders making a pit stop, well, Mark Webber's continued for another lap. And not only is Webber blisteringly quick, he had way more fuel than his rivals. So that pretty much will cement Toyota as championship contenders. The rest of versus Sutto going into turn 13. I think Sutto might have had a go at Daniel Ricciardo and he's dropped a bit of time. You can see Lewis Hamilton not too far behind either. Locking up his tyre was Paul de Resta there. <coughs> and Sato and Bidding, they continued for another lap. So, the two of the top three are getting close to making just the one stop. And a bit of a lock up for Heidfeld, he's struggling on his second set of tyres. As you can see in front of him there is Christian Albers pulling away quite rapidly. And in fact, Heifeld is under pressure from the Renault into turn number three. And that was a forceful move from Rubens Barrichello, but a good move nonetheless. He's up to eight at the moment, but you haven't yet to make a pit stop. Yeah, Heifeld's really struggling at this stage of the race. We're having a look at Mark Webber, that's continuing on for yet another lap. He's on to lap 26 out of 58. As Hulkenberg, that is... That is losing it. That's not losing position. That's going to lap down on Mark Webber, actually. So Hulkenberg, his early pace now, he's made his pit stop. He's dropping back. Sebastian Vettel's coming into the pits from four. Where can he rejoin in relation to Sergio Perez? That is the key one for himself. And I suspect it is the lower fuel that is the better factor because Kenny Reichen. Well, having said that, Christian Albers is close, is quite close to Kenny Reichen, just nine tenths of a second. So Albers is going through a light middle stint compared to other drivers. Suttil coming into the pits now from 11th place. That is his first scheduled stop. Now I suspect Suttil. Yeah, I suspect it is going to... Ooh, Vettel, who was that? He was trying to fend off the memory of Ru Rubens Barry Keller. <coughs> In fact, Vettel's just jumped Heidfeld. But here comes Rubens Barry Keller once again into turn three, not making that one stick. But Vettel, splendid laps before his pit stop, and combined with the fact that Heidfeld is struggling quite badly on his second set of tyres, Vettel has jumped him, so that's a good one. Is Jensen Button. In fact, here comes Kamui Kobayashi. I thought he was going to make a pit stop, but he's just pulled out of the race. So, because he's just hit the wall, and he's, yeah, he's that's that's a precarious one. Anyone looking to make a pit stop, beware. There is a McLaren, a McLaren that's converted into a tricycle. This is going to cause some carnage, I suspect. Matthias Lauder is into the pits. Now he's had to negotiate around the strand McLaren of Kamui Kobayashi. Vettel versus Barrichello versus Heidfeld. That's going round the next few corners. It sure is Kobayashi in the pits, so I'd be very amazed if they can bolt on a new wheel after Kobayashi clunked it into the wall. Now here comes Rubens Barrichello, that was once again on Sebastian Vettel going into turn one. Rubens Barrichello takes fifth position. And it's looking more likely that the top three are going to be doing just one stop in this race. Albus has passed Kimi Raikkonen on this on this somewhere because he's up into fourth position. So he's Raikkonen going for a one-stop strategy also because he's dropping back a lot from Christian Albus. Mark Webber in the pits, race leader Mark Webber in the pits. And then here comes Takuma Sato, also making a pit stop. So the top two making pit stops, and Jensen Button is going to take the lead of the race briefly. I suspect he will jump Weber, but of course Jensen has to make a pit stop. We're looking at a bit of a kerfuffle going through the long left. It's Rubens Barrichello in sixth position now, ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Nick Heidfeld in eighth. <coughs> and then the Toro Rosso of Daniel Ricciardo in 9th, with Lewis Hamilton in 10th. Looks like we have a mixture of 1 and 2 stops in this race. 
And it seems as if the one stop strategy is the better one to go for because we've got Mark Webber and Takuma Saito having a new still ahead of 15 Albers. And Albers on a lighter fuel load, he's got to do some overtaking if he's going to make, I suspect there will be a two stop strategy work. So this is going to be an interesting one to unfold as Lewis Hamilton comes into the pits for what should be his only stop. Felipe Massa making a move on Sergio Perez going into the first corner. Is Massa going to make that stick? He should do, but Perez is hanging on around the outside. No, Perez hung on to that one. Good effort. And now Perez still defending vigorously from Super Aguirre. As Jason Button now comes into the pits from the race lead. <coughs> so it's about 30 seconds to make a pit stop here. Because we've got Takuma Sato about 30 seconds behind Jensen. We might be close to something like 20, no, 32 seconds. So we're looking at an aerial shot of one of the Toro Lossos, and I believe that was Paul DiResto, if that is the number 23. Switch to Takuma Sato. There's, there's Jensen Button. He's jumped the Honda. So Toyota using the lighter fuel load to a great effect as that was super good. Smoking his way past Paul DiResto, going through the... Which one is that? That's going through turn 9 and 10, which is a sweeper. Down to the fast chicane of turn 11 and 12. <coughs> Daniel Ricciardo in ninth place, making a pit stop. We'll rejoin behind Lauda, rejoin behind Perez. And a few others as well. And Felipe Massa also making a pit stop. So, two Toyotas, one and two. Now, Mark Webber 15 seconds ahead of Jensen Button. And Takuma Sato 3.1 seconds. Yeah, he lost a lot of time on his outlaps to Takuma Sato. Or Jensen Button flew on his inlaps. But there's Adrian Sutto having made a pit stop. Now the fourth in position. <coughs> Ahead of one of the Toro Rosso, as we've got Lewis Hamilton challenging that Daniel Ricciardo. I think it must be Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, now that pit stops have shipped, it's Adrian Sutter. Then behind we have got. So this is Jensen Button we're looking at now. So, in second position. What can you do about Mark Webber? Not a right lot by the looks of it, it's 15.8 seconds. And just behind we've got Hulkenberg challenging Paul de Resta. But Rubens Barrichello finally makes a pit stop from 6. That's on his 29th lap. So he went a long way in the race, and didn't do too badly in the end, but we relinquished that to Sebastian Vettel. Nick Heifeld dropped down to 7. And it should be Matthias Lauda in 8, it is. Perez in 9, yep. And Joe Bianchi moving back up into the points. 10th place for the Frenchman. It's an overhead shot of Daniel Ricciardo we're looking at. The number 22, labelled on his Toro Rosso. And as Toro Rosso finished last in the championship in 2007. They're running 22 and 23. Hamilton having a look at Ricciardo and making that one very convincingly well. You can see the Michelin logos on the Toro Rosso, and I believe Red Bull are running the same. Have a little check that. Red Bull, Michelin, yes. Yeah, some suppliers have jigged around from pillar to post. We've got two teams on Bridgestone, they are Honda and Force India. And look at this, Beckel versus Heidfeld. Heidfeld now having regained his composure, he's trying to overtake Sebastian Vettel for sixth position. I what tyres is he on? Is he on the <coughs> Pirellis? Or is he on the Michelin? It is the Michelin. So, the Michelin. so Adrian Sutter will have a look on the outside now, switching to the inside and deja vu because we've got Nico Hulkenberg trying the same thing on Paul de Resta. I think Adrian Sutter was about to have a look on... Oh, here it is. The fifth in place on Daniel Ricciardo. I'm not making that one work. 
So I've got them pulling away from Takuma Saito now is the gap between those two. Which is 4.4. So it looks as if it's a done deal. Look at Alba's. Alba's having a look at Takuma Sato going through 9 and 10. So Christian Alba's, he sniffs a podium, but I do still think he's on that two-stop strategy. That's going through the first car. That's Adrian Sutton looking at the Toro Rosso. He's in a Toro Rosso sandwich. And Adrian Sutton is a German driver. He's most likely to be a black horse. Turning through turn 15, I think that is, is Jensen Button. So through what should be the final corner. Look at the grid actions if that's the case. There they are. So Jensen Button at that to start. Black Foot for two. In second place. Alba's in the pits already. That was a very, very short middle stint. Oh, very short. And that's Adrian Sutto tagging Daniel Ricciardo into the gravel trap. That was another incident for Sutto, it seems. And Ricciardo rejoins. There's a rejoin. There he is onto the circuit. I'm nearly making an absolute mess of that. So not a great lap for Force India because Alba's has had to pit early and Adrian Sutto has had to have an incident. I think he's rejoined safely though. Well, a little bit further down the order. And here they are, I mean, it's a very curious strategy for Alba's anyway. Is that a two stop strategy or is this a, a very strange three stop that he's running? But anyway, that moves Kimi Reichman up to fourth position. So he's 5.4 seconds behind Takuma Sato now. And that low fuel load that Sato ran after Kimi Reichman's pit stop has helped him a lot. That's Sebastian Vettel from sixth place. Now that's an incident because he's went off into the dust. Now I think Heidfeld has had a tag, had a go at Vettel going into that corner and he's put Vettel up into the grass. So we've now got Heidfeld some 7.9 seconds ahead of Sebastian Vettel. And now Vettel has got Matthias Lauder not too far behind as well. There's your race leader Mark Webber. He's 17 seconds ahead of Jensen Button now, pretty much. 16.8. It could be in Pedanti. So that going through turn 6, 7 and 8, I think that is. It should be a breaking zone into turn number 9. There it is. And now it's coming out of the so, there's Christian Albers winning that new strategy, now in 8th place, ahead of Sergio Perez. And Lauder pulling away from Albers, that's 6 tenths quicker in that final sector. And in the background there's a Renault coming onto the pitch straight, that will be Rubens Barrichello. Pretty sure Robert Kubica retired from the race on that early shenanigan, as yes, he did, I remember that, coming up on the screen. 14th place Nico Hulkenberg and he's not too far behind Paul the rest. So Hulkenberg looking to try and make the end of the Sauber's race work in the Got involved in that collision. That's Massa pulling out of the race, is it? Yeah, it is, and straight into the barrier. And he had a puncture, you can see, and there's a tyre in the way, and a Toyota's hit it! Now, was that Mark Webber or is it Jensen Button? Right, that is Mark Webber, race leader, hitting the errant wheel of Felipe Massa. So Mark Webber is going to have to come into the pits for the new front wing. This has changed the race a little bit. Goodness me, that is drama. And keep an eye out on the gaps now between Webber and Button going through the first sector point. Before the incident happened, it was 17 seconds and there's Massa still trundling along. And Kimi Raikkonen having to avoid that one. Well, Webber's still got some pace in amongst him because it's just the, it's now just 15.8 seconds. So it appears that not having a front wing is not so bad. But Webber will have to make that pit stop as Camille Kirby actually dodges. They're all dodging, in fact. <coughs> He's still trundling along his massa and creating a bit of a nuisance for everyone. But yeah, it was a mechanical issue for massa on these right rear suspension, or it could be a puncture, that meant that he decided to just petulantly slam it into the wall, and as a result that's hindered Mark Webber badly. He's in the pits now, and Button gained some three seconds in that middle sector. Yeah, it's a puncture in the end for Massa, but it is way worse than that now. 
because he's got no front left tyre. So that's changed the complexion of the race quite a lot because Weber having led the race very convincingly, now he's got it all to do. Can he rejoin ahead of Kimi Raikkonen? I don't think he can. Keep an eye on the timing screen. Yeah, Raikkonen jumped in as well, so Mark Webber up into fourth. Is it going to be fifth once he exits the pits? It's still fourth, so Mark Webber still in fourth place. But that's cost him dearly. So there is your new race leader now, Jensen Button. Multiple race winner in the previous season. And he could get another one, although this one would have been beneficial to him because, well, it, Cruel look for Mark Webber, really. So he's seven seconds ahead of Takuma Sato, and Takuma Sato is 5.1 seconds ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Mark Webber is seven seconds behind Kimi Raikkonen now. <coughs> if the top three are running at two stops, then it might not be so bad for Mark Webber. We could still win that way, but if the top three are one stopping, then Mark Webber is going to well, it's a bit trashed down in front, but anyway, Adrian Suttle versus Toro Rosso into turn three. I think Suttle will look as if he's going to make that one stick. The buzz, that was on Paul de Resta for 14th place. So Suttle's had a bit of an adventure this race. He's had a front wing gone, and then he's had an instant with the other Toro Rosso of Daniel Ricciardo as part of his recovery drive. And now he's up to 14th place. Who's his next target? I think it should be Nico Hulkenberg in 13th place. Danny Ricciardo should be in 12th. Rubens Barrichello in 11th. Will Bianchi still in 10th, driving very impressively. And he's less than a second behind Sergio Perez as well. So he's doing a good job, is Bianchi. As mentioned, Perez in 9th. Alba's in 8th. Alba's in 7th. Vettel 6th. We had that instant with Nick Heidfeld. What's the gap between the two? Well, timing screens have gone a little bit wonky, but once they update, it should be a little bit more back to normal. But let's see. Heidfeld in 5th now. Mark Webber 4th. Kimi Raikkonen 3rd. Takuma Sato 2nd. And Jensen Button is the driver we're looking at. And the race leader. Goes Jensen Button. This is the final corner now. A bit trickier than you think. Partly because for a while there was an exit curb which had a little bit of a bump in it. So I've since leveled that out. A bit of AstroTurf as well to help you out. Vettel's 10 seconds behind Heidfeld. That's the gap between the two. Timing screen's working fine. My eyes are not. It's 8.1 seconds, the gap between Button and Sato. Kimi Raikkonen five seconds behind Sato. And Mark Webber dropping back quite a bit from Kimi Raikkonen, so I think that is basically fuel, and that top three must still be two stopping. Because if Webber is that much slower at this stage of the race, then it would make sense if Webber is two stopping. <coughs> still got 22 laps to go. Or for Jensen Button, nearly 21 laps to go because I think he is through turn 14. He is not, he's through turns 6, 7, and 8. No, it's actually 11 and 12 because there is Takuma Sato going through. A long sweep before the fast chicane of 11 and 12. And Button still pulling out the gap between himself and Takuma Sato. Now going into turn 13. Once again, it does seem as if it's going to be a Japanese war this season between Toyota and Honda. interesting, isn't it? And last season we had a third Japanese winner in the final Super Euro. In fact, then we're running the series endings in the 2007 season. Now we've switched to Cosmo. We've recruited Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massi. But the first race for Super Euro this season has not gone well because both drivers retired from the race. Fernando Alonso very, very early on after a collision with Juan Pablo and Montoya. And then Felipe Massa pulling off with a puncture and then causing havoc with Mark Webber's race. And the gaps between the top four remaining pitches static at the moment. 
Nick Heidfeld. He is right behind Martin Webber. We should be seeing this and not the other Toyota. The gap is just a quarter of a second between Webber and Heidfeld. So we're going to see a back and forth place between those two now. And we've got the other Honda in seventh place. Still a good drive from Christian Albers. Where did he start? Christian Albers started seventh, that was Lily Matthias Lauder in the other Honda. So he started really well in the Alder in 15th place and now he's up to seventh. So that's a good effort from Lauder. Christian Albers started seventh and finished in eighth. He's, well, his start at the moment is in eighth place. Getting ahead of myself to the end of the race, but anyway, this is Kimi Reichman we're looking at, rounding turn 14. And a new fastest slap for Jensen Button, that was a 125.2 or 3. And Kimi Raikkonen, who we were looking at briefly, he's 5 seconds behind Takuma Sato, who's still dropping back from the Toyota. The Toyota that rounds turn 5 now. And I felt having a look at Weber going to turn one. Can he make this move stick or is Weber going to hang round the outside? He is indeed. But Weber struggling at this stage to maintain the position between himself and Nick Heifel. Heifel having another look into turn three, but Weber just line. far enough ahead. <clears throat> Hulkenberg versus Sutter for 13th place. In a few laps anyway, because Hulkenberg has got to get to the gap over his compatriot. And in the final corner goes Hulkenberg who had a few impressive races during the back end of 2007. I remember Fuji was a particularly good race despite a three stop strategy. And yeah, Weber really dropping back from, from Kimi Raikkonen now. Heidfeld having another look, that's around the outside of the work. Neither is that at the inside of turn 11. But I felt much, much faster at this stage of the race. So Weber, I think, is through to the end of the race. And you've got to be careful because Jensen Button is doing these fast laps out of the front. And it takes about 30 seconds to make a pit stop. And the gap between Button and Weber is... Well, it's 26 seconds, but it could quite easily go up a bit more. Now, Weber's got a little bit of respite now because Heifeld is into the pits for his second pit stop. And front end looking a bit unstable on the Toro Rosso of Daniel Ricciardo. You could see it bobbing under braking for turn number nine. And at the moment, Ricciardo is he's just made a pit stop, I think, because he's now behind Paul de Resta. So Ricciardo now in 16th position. As Heidfeld, where can he rejoin? Can he rejoin ahead of Rubens Barrichello? He might well do. And we do still have Bob Williams in the top ten, actually. Barrichello's jumped Heidfeld. And look at that, Hamilton going very, very wide. I don't know which corner that was. Is that going to be turns one and two? It might well be. Let's see if he breaks. Going into a fairly tight right three. And turn left into four. He's missed the apex of four as well. So Hamilton really struggling at the moment. He's in fact, he might well have been trying to avoid Nick Heidfeld at pit exit. That might well have explained why Hamilton was on the grass at the exit of turn one. Gap really pulling out between Jensen Button and Takuma Sato. It's now 11 seconds. And Sebastian Vettel in fifth place at the moment. 7.4 seconds behind Mark Webb. Been a solid drive from Sebastian Vettel. He didn't qualify to either. 13th. Uh, yeah, been a very good drive from Sebastian Vettel at the moment. We do still have 17 laps to go. And anything could happen. And that anything did happen for Matt Webber. That's why he sits in fourth place at the moment. Desperate to try and keep the gap between him and Jensen Button in check because we may well be seeing Jensen Button coming into the pits for his second pit stop. So we'll do some unusual strategies. I mean, we seem to be running a very, very long first stint, followed by two short ones afterwards. That is if it's correct, and the Jensen Button still has to make another pit stop. As we look at Takuma Sato, breaking for turn 13, 
hits the apex pretty well. Jensen Bunn, as I speak about strategy, is in the pits by his second pit stop. So yeah, they're running very sharp middle stints, just like Christian Albers did. Now where can where can ooh, better get in well onto the curbs at the exit of turn 12? Losing a little bit of time as he tries to pull away from Matthias Lambo. Still driving the brilliant race, I think. Now, Jensen Button. Keep an eye out between himself and Martin Webber. Can Webber still jump Jensen Button? Yeah, he's going to be very, very close. And Sergio Perez had lost a position to Jules Bianchi as well. Now, then, there's Kimi Räikkönen in second. And Jensen Button, he may well have jumped Martin Webber for the effective race lead. He has done, yes. Jensen Button jumping Martin Webber. So Webber's going to be distraught about that. And as Webber had to pit first for that new front wing, it's looking a bit unlikely that he'll win in front of his own crowd. Jules Bianchi's in the pits as well, so he'll be dropping down the order a little bit, but no doubt we'll regain some of those positions once the rest of the pits up. That is the Toyota battle right there. Jensen Button versus Matt Webber, going through turns 6, 7 and 8. Matt Webber quite close, and look at that, contact between Kobayashi and one of the Williamses, that must have been Rubianke. And he's just behind, there is a Force India in amongst the mix. Now that must be Adrian Sutil if he's made a third pit stop. Because we've still got Christian Alves up in seventh position, so this is between Kobayashi, uh, Bianchi and that was the Force India with Adrian Sutil. So, Jensen Button versus Mark Webber, that is Sutil versus, in fact, is that Kirby Ashley? I think it, it must have been Kirby Ashley, but Kirby Ashley's way, way down the order. I'll have to have a bit of check that one. But anyway, Takuma Sato leads the race at the moment, but still having to make a final pit stop. Jimmy Raikkonen, second place at the moment, 4.4 seconds, and Takuma Sato. <coughs> and it was Kimi Raikkonen who put it first out of the two. Uh, he pitted fairly early, I seem to remember. I mean, not early early, but at lap 26. So, uh, I think Kimmy's doing a much more reasonable middle stint compared to the likes of Christian Alders and Jensen Button. And the two Toyotas are still very close together, as Lewis Hamilton is in the pits as well for his second pit stop. So, that should move Heidfeld back up to 10, does, and it'll move Adrian Suttle up to 11th. In fact, I'm wondering if the contact between the McLaren and the Williams... It might have been Heidfeld, but Kobayashi... Actually, Kobayashi shouldn't even be in this race. He ripped his wheel off, so he got very lucky in terms of rejoining. So, yeah, Kobayashi is way down the order. There he is. We're looking at him right now. So he must be a lap behind the Williams and the Toro Rosso you can see behind him. Yeah, he's some 59 seconds behind Nico Hulkenberg. Kobe actually, I think, is last at the moment. Still trying to work out how he's still even in the race. He obviously, yeah, he had that wheel problem. As Sato has put the lap on Nico Hulkenberg, who's must have made three stops or made a second pit stop quite early. Jimmy Raikkonen took quite a lot of time out of Takuma Sato on that last lap. It's now just 3.1 seconds. So Raikkonen now on the move. He can sniff a result. You can sniff a podium at this rate, I think, as we see Heidfeld versus Suttle going through turn 14. Suttle very quick at this point. But I think Suttle has another pit stop to make. He made an unscheduled one and then he made a scheduled one on lap 26. So I think he's got one more visit to the pits to make. <coughs> at the moment, he's pounding Heidfeld for 10th place going to turn 1, and Suttle has taken that position off of him. So for the moment, Soto is in the points. Both Ross and he's in the top 10. We should be expecting Soto into the pits anytime soon. Gap between the button and weather. That's just gone out to 1.9 seconds. Well, it's two seconds now. That's going through the second sector points. So Button's newer tyres compared to Mark Webber are starting to come into effect now. And one lucky Aussie now in fourth place, but he does still have a podium on the cards. Once Takuma Sato and Kimi Raikkonen make their second pit stops in first and second. This should be happening soon, but that's not on that last lap. We've only got 13 laps to go now, or 14 if you count this one, which you do. 
so it is 14 laps to go. As Matthias Lauda comes into the pits from 6th place. That will move Christian Albers up a position, perhaps up to 6th place for the first new driver. And then it could move Sergio Perez up a position, but we'll have to keep an eye out on the gaps. Yep, Sergio Perez gains position, and Rubens Barrichello at the moment in the run, now moves it to 8th at the expense of Matthias Lauda. And can Lauda rejoin ahead of the battling Sutto and Hyde? Into the pits, I think that is, for Paul de Resta. Yep, Paul de Resta into the pits from that last 12th place. And Lauda rejoined ahead of Adrian Sutto. So as the mechanics get to work on the Toro Rosso, we switch to Jensen Button, but now we switch back to Sutil versus Heidfeld versus Lauda. This is a three way battle for ninth place. Should become a two way battle once. Uh, Adrian Suttle makes his third and final pit stop. Kimi Raikkonen is into the pits as well, so that's going to move Jensen Button and Mark Webber up to the podium places. So once again, as was the case in the first round pit stops, Kimi Raikkonen has had to pit first. As the tyre slider goes into turn 9, coming out of it at turn 10, now into the straight with the palm trees on the right. A sweeper, which doesn't have a corner number, now into turn 11 and 12, the best corner on the circuit. Left, foot right, and Matthias Lauda sits in ninth place at the moment. We have Sebastian Vettel having made a pit, where well he's making a pit stop from that. He was fifth, but now he's having made a pit stop, he's going to rejoin behind Albers and Perez, curiously. Albers made a very early second pit stop. Are you making a free stop, or was that just basically an early second pit stop? Keep an eye out on that one as the battling Tori Rosso of Paul de Resta and Nico Hulkenberg in the BMW Sauber going through turn 11 and 12. And Raikkonen is some 8.7 seconds behind Mark Webber. So once Sato makes his pit stop, he should rejoin between Webber and Raikkonen. And as going through locking up his tyres goes Nick Heifeld in 11th place. He's going to force him the is that a Force India sandwich? It is, yeah. Or is that a McLaren behind Heidfeld? I think it is a McLaren. Yeah, it is. It's Kobe Ashley who is the lap down. Sato comes into the pits. One lap after Kimi Raikkonen. Subtle all over the back of Lauda at that point. And look at that, out breaking the Austrian. Going into turn 9 and out of it to turn 10. Adrian Subtle gaining the position at the expense of Lauda. Now Lauda should have Nick Heidfeld all over the back of him. Can't see it from that shot, but he definitely saw subtle zoom past the Honda. <clears throat> Albers into the pits. That's his third pit stop. That's from fifth place, so that could move Perez up a position. Indeed, it does. And Rubens Barrichello is in the pits for his second stop as well. So he'll be dropping down the order a bit. That will move Vettel back up the order. Vettel will rejoin. Well, he should gain sixth, but I think Perez may still have one more stop to make. And Sato did indeed rejoin third. There's the two Toyotas, Button versus Weber. It's two seconds the gap between the two. And Sato's 5.4 seconds behind. That's going to be the first sector point though. As Lauda versus Albers going into turn three, that could get very, very tasty. Sutter's up to seventh now. Should be in the pits on this next lap though. And Albers, did he hang on the head of Lauda? I think he did. Barrichello's pit stop moved him out of the points now. He's down to 11th place behind Heidfeld. We've got a vicious battle going on now for 8th place between Albers, Lauda and Heidfeld. As we look overhead on Jensen Gunn. We're about to start another lap. 11 laps to go for the Toyota driver. And he's 2.1 seconds ahead of Weber. Weber's keeping him in check despite all the tyres. Joe Bianchi, 12th place now. Looking at Rubens Barrichello. Barrichello's jumped the Frenchman. So it may well be that Bianchi might not get points after all, so hitting earlier probably hasn't helped his race. But still a fairly impressive baby for Jules. Suttles in the pits now, so that's from 7th place, so he'll drop quite a way down the order behind Albers, behind Lauda, behind Heidfeld. 
eventually behind Barrichello and maybe behind Bianchi all as well and looks as if Sato can't do anything about the Toyota Maelstrom at the front button from where the from Sato but Sato dropping back it was 5.9 seconds to the first sector well he's gained a little bit in the middle sector it's now 5.8 seconds and Kimi Raikkonen is about 3.5 seconds behind Sato now in 4th place in the McLaren and Sergio Perez in 5th but he may still have another pit stop to make so that should move Sebastian Vettel up the position Christian Albers could therefore get 6th in a fairly decent drive in the Force India which has been much improved since 2007 and Jensen pulling away a little bit from Weber on that last lap, 2.3 seconds of the gap. Perez into the pits now, so Vettel will move up to 5th place in the Red Bull. And Weber locking his front there, going into turn 3, so he's still pushing, but I don't think he can do anything about Jensen Button, unfortunately, for the Aussie. And there's Vettel confirmation that he's back up to 5th place. Now where's Perez versus Albers? Keep an eye out on the bottom. As we look at Takuma Sato, now we switch. And there is Perez coming out of the pits. He's going to rejoin in ninth place. <coughs> As you can see, Albers is sixth now. Matthias Lauber seventh. Nick Heinfeld's back up to eighth. So even amongst that scramble, he's still amongst there. With Sergio Perez in ninth place now. So. Ferrari could still get some points despite Timo Block's retirement earlier on in the race with their drive shaft failure coming out of turn 13. And Rubens Barrichello in 10th place now, and Giovanni in 11th. That was after Adrian Sutter made that pit stop. He's third of the race. So Takuma Sato, that's him exiting the final corner onto the main straight. 5.5 seconds now behind Mark Webber. Well, it's 5.7 as we cross the line there. Into turn one, there goes the curb. And the curb of two, and now the outside curb of the exit of two before a bit of a straight into turn number three. You can see the number one onto King Sato's car, winning that for the third consecutive season in 2006, 2007, and now 2008. Still, Jensen Button pulls away a little bit from Mark Webber, who must be feeling pretty sick in that car after collecting Felipe Massa's element wheel. On around lap 32 33. And it was all Felipe's fault as well. I mean, the puncture wasn't his fault, but slamming it into the wall, you'd... that's it's not good. So, we've just got a few laps to go now. At the end of this one, there'll be just eight laps to go. But there's still the two Toyotas who are leading first and second. And that'll be, that'll be their first one too since at some point last season. That would be Mons, I think. As I quickly check. Yep, it'll be the first one since Spa, actually. Uh, Button had a win at Spa, Weber was second there. And Sato entering the main straight as Jensen Button was about to exit the main straight. Sato weaving the car a little bit on the main straight and if he's just feeling for something. And Kimi Raikkonen is not giving up on chasing to Kim Sato for third place, it's just 2.8 seconds. 2.9 actually, as they cross the start finish line. So it could still be a battle for third if things start to go a little bit wrong for Sato. I can't imagine they would be because. Sato did pick later than Raikkonen, but it could be that Sato Honda's in the mediums. As I'm sure the McLarens are as well. Going through turns 9 and 10. And I've just double checked, McLarens are indeed running mediums. And that means that BMW Sauber will be running, will have been running hard times for this race. So into turn 13 goes Mark, goes Jensen Button. And now into turn 13 goes Mark Webber. Three seconds now behind Jensen. Around the final few corners. Onto the main straight. And to start lap number 52 goes Jensen Button. 
Now he finished, where did he finish in the championship last time out? He finished fourth, 17 points behind Juan Pablo Montoya. But that's because we're using the updated points for this season. So it's 25 for a win, 18 for second, 15 for third, 12 for fourth, then 10 for fifth, 8 for sixth, 6 for seven. This is getting confusing now. Uh, four points for eighth place, nine place gives you two points, and then one point for finishing ten. Everyone from Jensen Button all the way down to Rubens Barrichello and ten will score points for this race. <coughs> and while we're looking at the gaps between the points, uh, the gap between Sato and Weber when the championship end was just twelve points. Basically, a fourth place could have swung either way, but the gap was as low as five between Sato and Weber going into the final race. And then a quick recap on the different suppliers everyone's using. We've got a majority of running AP Racing brakes. Only four team, five teams aren't. Oh, that's a Force India slowing down. Is that Adrian Suttle? I think it is. That's from 13th place. Out of the race goes Suttle. So that'll move De Resta up a position. That'll move Hulkenberg up a position. And then Daniel Ricciardo up a position as well. So a suspension problem it seems for the Force India. And they're the leaders. About to put that... Well you can see Suttle being created into what looked like the fan zone. <coughs> so that'll be a bit of a worry for... Christian Albers in 6th place, but there are only a few laps, so it might be okay. Um, four teams are running Bosch brakes, they are Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Renault and Ferrari, and there's just one team running Brembo brakes, and that is the Force India team. And then we've got Fuel, let's see who we've got. Three running Patronus Fuel, and they consist of Honda, Red Bull and Toro Rosso. Red Bull and Toro Rosso are running in the series We've got Shell Fuel being run by Toyota and Force India. More than one, four teams have preferred that. They are McLaren, Williams, Ferrari and BMW. And then two teams running Total Fuel. They are Super Aguri and Renault. And then just quickly recapping the times. McLaren, Williams, Red Bull, and Colorado. Two on Bridgestone, Honda, and Force India. And then five teams on Pirelli, so Toyota, Supergirl, Renault, and Ferrari. And also the end of the South. We've got a nice little mix there. And no teams want to be the lock tyres that are available. And you can get bouncy in the braking for one of the cars that run ball with the suspected as a race leader. Yeah, it's looking very bouncy, so some dampers not running properly for Jensen Button, but he's still pulling away from Mark Webber. 3.9 seconds to get to the top two, and Raikkonen still trying to close in on to Kuhn Sato's third place. 2.1 seconds the gap, just needs a little bit more if he's going to challenge. And there's Christian Albers. Into turn one, passing the part to Adrian Suttle, whose car will probably be dismantled by some drunk peasants. Into turn three comes the Dutchman, driving quite well in sixth place at the moment. That's got Matthias Lauder 3.9 seconds behind, the high is 1.1 seconds behind Matthias Lauder. Perez running ninth, 3.1 seconds behind high five, and Rubens Barrichello. 6.4 seconds in such a pass. It would be good for Renault if they got a point because they didn't have a very good qualifying session. They're way down in 18th and 20th. So not too bad from Rubens. I think the Renault Renault's been running the hard tyres as well. Just four laps to go for Jensen Button now. He's extended the gap to four seconds between himself and Mark Webber. And Kinsato is still only 5.4 seconds behind Weber. Remember, Weber's on those old tyres. And Raikkonen has been one of the quicker drivers in this final stint, but I suspect it's going to be too, too late to challenge for Takuma Sato's third place. I'm sure I'll give it a good go. 
Both the cars, amazingly enough, are still running. That's despite Kirby Ash's. Well, it was looked like a mechanical issue that then prompted him to rip his tyre off, but because he was so close to the pit lane, he could, he could crawl in and get that wheel replaced and whatever was wrong with the McLaren car before then. Puncture, I suppose, but it didn't look as if the car was low. So, yeah, it's a bit of an oddity there. But anyway, Kobayashi is still in the race. And what are the other drivers? We've got both Super Gurries out uh, for different reasons. Alonso getting in a collision with Juan Pablo Montoya very early in the race. So bits have crashed out very early on. Timo Block had a drive shaft failure, and Montoya he was involved in that collision with Fernando Alonso, and Massa had a puncture. That may well have covered all the retirements, but there may have been one that I've missed off. As we look at Takuma Sato in third place, two seconds now ahead of Kimi Raikkonen, so I think that position, those two positions are pretty safe now. And I must repeat that Vettel has had a very good drive from 13th on the grid to finish, well, to currently run 5th, we're not finished just yet. And a good drive from Lauda as well, from 15th up to 7th. The one key thing that will come out of this is just how good the Toyota car is, because we've had Jensen Button, well, it was Mark Webber who started 2nd on the grid, took the lead around the outside from of Takuma Sato going into the first corner, I think that must have been. And Jensen Button challenged as well, but had to settle for third place. And then the first part of the race was basically a story of Mark Webber pulling away from the figure quite alarmingly. It's going to start with some 17 odd seconds, probably a bit less than that, about 13 seconds behind Webber before the, before the pit stops happened. Then Jensen Button was running third, he got overtaken by Kimi Reichman before Reichman made his pit stop and Jensen Button on a much longer fuel load was able to address the balance and actually jump to Kumasato for second and then Felipe Massa's puncture followed by slam into the wall meant that Weber hit the errant tyre and had to make a new, had to make his second pit stop very early to replace the front wing. And that is why Weber is in second behind Jensen Button, because Button took advantage of that one. Pulled out enough of a gap to rejoin just ahead of the Aussie. Speaking of which, there he is in second place now. And he's fairly low now in second, despite, despite what should have been an easy race win. Just wasn't meant to be. Don't think that will bother the Toyota team bus too much. They've got their cars first and second. That'll move them. That'll put them on 43 points and quite convincingly in the lead of the championship. It's very clear that they are the team to beat this season. About to start his final lap now is Jensen Button. He's about to lap one of the Toro Rossos of Daniel Ricciardo. Bit curious that Ricciardo ended up behind Paul Di Resta and Nico Hülkenberg. So. Must have been a very early second pit stop that has caused that to happen. Let's hope he doesn't make this too difficult for Jensen going into turn three. Well, Jensen's not close enough just yet. I'm sure Jensen will lap the Tolerosa at some point. And on board with Takuma Sato going into turn three. Kimi Raikkonen just two seconds behind the Japanese driver, three time champion. As it is the final lap, Sato looks safe for a podium. Now putting that lap on Ricardo is Jensen Button going into turn number 9. Out of turn number 10 he goes, and just six more corners, six corners listed on the map to go, and Ricardo having a look back at Jensen Button going around the outside of the sweep. 3.8 seconds between Button and Weber, but that's not really relevant at this stage because it is the final lap and through the final sector. Jensen Button still ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Here's a lap down. A few more corners to go now. That's the Toyota of Mark Webber we're looking at. But in front of Mark Webber is Jensen Button who exits the final corner 
and to take the first win of the 2008 season goes Jensen Button. Mike Webber will come Fantastic home in second try. place. Great job. And in third should be long to Takuma Sato. And Tony Riker will be fourth. So a very convincing performance from the two Toyota drivers. They did get that one too, but it should really have been the other way around had Mark Webber managed to avoid that tyre in time. There's Sato and there's Raikkonen, third and fourth. Vettel will come home in fifth place. Good result for himself in the Red Bull. And Christian Albers will be sixth ahead of Matthias Lauda. Sixth and seventh. Hyford will get points for eighth. He got points last time out, last season in Melbourne as well. So Hyford continuing his good record at Albert Park. And Sergio Perez will be ninth ahead of Rubens Barrichello in tenth place. So Renault gets one point, despite their really good position. And you can see them all just cruising now, having finished the race. Jules Bianchi will be 11th, and then we'll just wait to see who will come home at 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Kobayashi should be 16th and last of the remaining runners. And you can see race over, Bianchi 11th, I think it was Lewis Hamilton in 12th place. We'll double check that once we've seen the top six there, as mentioned before. Button, Weber, Sato, Raikkonen, Vettel, Albers. And then a little bit further down, Matthias Lauda in seventh place. And then as mentioned before, well, Sergio Perez in ninth. Nick Heidfeld was eighth and Rubens Barrichello tenth. So that was the race at Albert Park, which saw Toyota finishing one and two. Next time out, we will be at the Oceanian Grand Prix, staying in Australia, but moving from the Victoria State to South Australian State, for the Adelaide Street Circuit. So, as we re recap the results, we shall see you for then.